how many of you are as leaders walking into your company and or in your team walking into your team and as you walk in you know people are not really happy to or excited to see you and you 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 show up with enthusiasm you're expecting your team to be really collaborative your team is excited to see you but it's just not you're not seeing that how many of you are you know maybe you're i know some of you are feeling this that you know you're working uh, to create uh, collaboration but somehow there's just people are not just uh, uh, you know they're not as much participative uh, they're not as much enthusiastic and you personally are seeing that it's just like they they're just coming in or going out of the office as a leader that's a challenge you know and some of you I know are facing that um, if we haven't met before my name is Fahim Kareem and I'm an employee engagement expert and I work with small and mid-sized companies that are faith and value based and I help them in keeping their talent by increasing their pro productivity and profitability by focusing on things that causes employee disengagement and by creating a roadmap I help these companies and leaders executives to get their teams back to being highly engaged so that they can reach high levels of productivity and that the company or the team gets to be more innovative and has a beautiful culture that where everybody really loves to come into work as I get more into the live I would love to hear from you where are you signing in from if you are watching this as a post live let me know in the comments where are you signing in from I'd love to hear from you and what are some of the things that you're seeing with your employees like uh, how if you're seeing that they're not engaged they're not as enthusiastic to see you uh, coming into work let me know are you facing those challenges this live is uh, an extension of a video uh, I shared this week it has to do with how to make your employees happy to see you again now as as, a, as someone who has worked and managed billion dollar businesses and moved large financial institutions from New York to other strategic locations I understand that in order to get things done the employee interaction the employee experience is so important because without that our productivity uh, the things that can go wrong are just not going to be uh, where we want them to be and how do I know that you know when I've seen teams when I worked with them the the positive impact it had when I did some of this when I applied some of the strategies that I'm about to share with you so in this weekly video um, I had shared one of the tips which is when when the employee comes in make him or, or her feel really uh, welcome and why why is that important you know there's a survey done uh, here by Cigna which is a healthcare company and it was done in 2018 just two years prior to COVID on loneliness and they used the data uh, from uh, they used actually the the index that was done by UCLA to measure loneliness and they found out that loneliness is a huge problem uh, in, in in our nation here in the US and what was striking to me is the age group that was most vulnerable and most lonely uh, you would think that most of us would think when it comes to loneliness that we would think it's the elderly population who are lonely but that's not the case the data showed and they 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 actually um, surveyed 20,000 adults that were above the age of 18 18 and above and they found out that between the ages uh, the most of the people that were lonely were between the ages 18 to 37 so that means Gen, Gen, Gen Z Gen Z is the uh, age group between 18 to 22 and as well as the Millennials between the age 23 and 37 and as I share this data with you it's really quite revealing uh, why this thing is such a problem um, so the, the they ask them questions like you know what are the things that you feel uh, and they uh, specifically ask them certain uh, questions they said that they felt more lonelier uh, and they claimed to be worse they actually the survey showed that this age group also had 
worse health than the older generations. Can you believe it? I can't because I know I've studied this thing that the loneliness, the data shows, is actually a person experiencing loneliness is worse than a person smoking 15 cigarettes a day. The damage it has on the health, right? So I'm not surprised by this data based on my research. And then individuals uh, who are lonely, they're more likely to have regular, uh, uh, who are less lonely actually. The people who are less lonely, they're going to be more active. They're going to be having more interactive uh, conversations. Uh, they're going to have overall good physical and mental health. And they've also found that they have balance in the daily activities. And of course, uh, more of them are employed. And so those, uh, creating those uh, experiences to make our employees feel less lonely, it's so important. Continuing on this data, I mean, this data is really profound. 46% of all those who are surveyed, they report sometimes or always feeling alone and 47 47% was feeling left out. Can you imagine? So um, if you have 10 employees, four or five of them are feeling left out. They're feeling lonely, whether at work or at home. And then at least two in five surveyed uh, are sometimes or always feeling as though they lack companionship, which was 43%. And then 43% also showed that their relationships are not meaningful. Uh, and, and also that they were isolated from others and that they no longer felt close to anyone. That was 39%. Imagine these data are before COVID. 39% of them are feeling alone and they're feeling like there's nobody really cares about them, 43% uh, of them. And then 59% surveyed, all is found sometimes that they, they feel that their interests and their ideas are not shared by those around them. 59%. So that means almost six of your 10 employees are feeling like their ideas or their interests are not shared. So now imagine you are that leader who is doing the opposite. This employee, think about this particular employee. Now, before I get into that, put in the comments, what are some of the things you're seeing that employees are in your team are struggling with? that you feel that you need help in trying to uplift them, trying to make them feel uh, more cared for so that they in turn will be happy to see you because you're helping them feel better and you're making them feel cared and, uh, and appreciated. So the reason this is important from a financial perspective as well, our data also shows that when employees feel that their managers, their leaders care for them, there's 81% less absenteeism, right? There's 41% less quality defects. And that means in the hospitals, there's 58% fewer accidents. 58% fewer accidents. Can you match that number? And there's 23% greater profitability. So what that means is that if your company is making $10 million a year, by you focusing on this care aspect of the employee experience, as well as making them feel important and cared for, it's gonna increase your profit by 23%. That means you're gonna get another extra $2.3 million in your profitability, right? So is, this is significant numbers. And these are not just numbers that I came up with. These are numbers that is tested, tried and, and surveyed and tested and, and, and very, uh, uh, these are from Gallup itself that they have collected this data that is very reliable. So continuing on this, how to make the employees feel more cared for? So simple things, for example, when the employee comes in to the office, let's say you're, you're on the Zoom talking to them or you're talking to them in person, rather than you focusing on your laptop, like you know, let's say the employee is talking to me right now on, on Zoom, and me, rather than you know, looking away, yeah, what's up, Jill? What's going on? Okay. Oh, okay. All oh, right. Oh, really? Mm hmm. Focus on giving them the full attention. So rather than being like this, turn the entire body and face them. 
Tell me more, Jill. What's going on? Right? And if you're not able to do that, if you're extremely busy at that time, let them know that, hey, Jill, I would love to catch up with you, but if you don't mind, just give me another five or ten minutes. Let me quickly finish up this thing that I'm working on that my boss is waiting for. I really want to listen to what you have to say, but I don't want to be half listening and half doing the work because I feel I'm not going to be doing justice to what you have to say. So give me five or ten minutes. Let me quickly finish this up, and I'll come and talk. I'm going to... I'm going to give you my full attention because I want to hear what you have to say. I'm really excited. I want to hear that. Right? So that's one tip. Turn your entire body when having the conversation with that person. Face them directly. Uh, second is that um, you know, ask them, well, how are they really doing? How are you doing? You know, a lot of times you know, people uh, in, here in our culture, uh, we, we tend to ask people, hey, hi, Joe. How are you? I'm fine. I'm good. I'm all right. Uh, it's, it's, uh, I'm good. That's typically you'll say, I'm good, I'm good, I'm good. Right? So it's, it's because it, our cultural practice is such that we don't really consider if somebody really wants to know. It's, it's almost like, uh, how do I put it? Um, it's, you know, it's just this thing we say, like, hi, hi, hi. But be different. <laughs> As a leader, or uh, as a manager, uh, when your employee, you're meeting them uh, and you're talking to them, don't say just, uh, how, how are you? And then just move on. No, really, how are you? Tell me, what's going on? How is things with you? How are you feeling today? How was your weekend? If you, if you know the employee has children, how are the children doing? If you know the employee is taking care of elderly per, uh, 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 parents, ask them about that. If you know the, the employee is taking care of a loved one, ask them about that. How is that going? Because these things, they may seem trivial. It's so important. It makes the person feel truly cared for. And I can tell you from personal experience, people are sometimes shocked. And they'll tell you, like, you really want to know how I'm doing? Yeah, I really want to know. How are you? Tell me. Right? So I want to leave you with those two tips. Uh, so try that. When you meet the employee, whether in person or in uh, virtually, greet them. Meet them with excitement. Let them know you care and that your whole body shows that. And that you pay full attention. Don't be like, yay, hey, what's up? Or don't be like looking down on them. Yeah, what's going on? No. Just pay close attention. Let them know you have, they have your full attention. Right? Number two is ask them to so tell me, how are you doing? How are you really doing? I want to know. Yes, I do want to know. Tell me. And, 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 and lead with that. Lastly, I'm going to leave you with a story. And this is a true story. You know, some of you uh, may be familiar with the San Francisco uh, Bay Bridge. Like, it's a huge bridge. But one of the reasons this bridge is also known for is people who commit suicide from this bridge. And one of this person who, went, who actually uh, uh, got up this morning, a uh, particular morning, and said, you know what, I'm, and that's it. I'm just fed up with life. And if, if just one, I'm going to take, you know, he decided to, he wants to jump off the bridge. So he tells himself that he's going to do it. Unless just one person, one person today asks him, how are you doing? How are you doing today? Really? So he gets up from his house, he goes to the car key, he sees his neighbor, waves hand, never asks him, how are you doing? He goes to the bridge, you know, close by, parks his car, and he's approaching, he's like, that's it, I'm going to do this. And then he sees two tourists taking pictures. He says, maybe they're going to ask me how I'm doing. He says, hey, can you please take a picture for us? Takes the picture, never asks him, how are you doing? So he does the, the almost worst thing possible, and he jumps on the bridge. How do we know this story? Because he survived. He's one of those rare people who survived from jumping off that bridge. So this is the level of loneliness that people are in. Imagine this is years before COVID. Imagine the, the loneliness people are experiencing at work, the stress that they're experiencing because of difficulties with their, at home or other things. But you being that leader that really s takes the time to Feel cheerful, truly cheerful in greeting them. 
And by doing so, they will reciprocate. This is human nature. When you show respect, you get respect. When you show care, people, you know, people don't care what we have to say unless they truly understand that we care for them. And by you doing this thing, these two things, you're going to see how happy your employees are to see you. So leave a comment below. Let me know what are some of the things you're seeing in your teams that are not greeting you. Uh, what are some of the things that you, f what challenges you're facing? I'd love to hear from you. And um, follow me on link. Uh, actually, connect with me in LinkedIn, uh, and uh, and send me any questions you may have regarding this particular topic. And I'll I'll try my best to answer them.